When Jimmy died, he appeared before the gates of heaven. St. Peter checked the list, said, here it is, Jimmy Apodaca in the book of life. He opened the gates and he said, Jimmy, I'm going to show you heaven now. So St. Peter walked this wonderful young fellow, Jimmy, through the gates and the first thing he sees as he brings him to this great banquet hall was food from every part of earth, chili like you've never had in New Mexico. <laughs> Heavenly cuisine, a banquet sumptuous, couldn't believe this incredible banquet. The next level of heaven he walked him to, there was a great dance hall and he saw angels dancing and songs, music, harmony, like he'd never heard on earth. And then he said, where are we going next, Peter? And St. Peter said, I'm taking you to your home. So he's walking him through the great streets of heaven and he's about to take a ride and Jimmy sees way in the back what appears to be the back end of heaven, something that looked like a Walmart in the skies. And Jimmy said, Peter, what's that giant warehouse back there? And Peter says, oh, Jimmy, you don't want to know. Now, what Peter didn't know about Jimmy was his extraordinary curiosity. And Jimmy was a short, swift little guy, and he took off running. And he ran so fast, Peter couldn't possibly catch up with him. Peter was huffing and puffing, this big lumbering Peter is trying to catch up. And he gets to the doors of that warehouse, opens the doors, and when Jimmy looks in, all he can see are gifts, beautifully wrapped gifts, row after row after row. And when Peter comes behind him, huffing and puffing, he turns to Peter and he says, Peter, why didn't you tell me about all these gifts? And he says, Jimmy, you don't want to know. But of course he did want to know. So Jimmy takes off running through this great warehouse and he's seeing it's alphabetically marked. He goes to the aisle with the A's and he sees an apodaca and well, there's Jimmy Akbat, there is his own name. Peter comes around the corner and he says, Peter, why didn't you tell me my gift was here? And what do you think Peter said? You don't want to know. What do you think Jimmy did? He grabbed that gift, he pulled it off the shelf, he ripped off the paper, opened the box, looked inside. And when he looked inside, a tear began to run down his cheek. Because inside that box was every gift God had intended for him on earth for which he never asked. Ask and you shall, Receive. seek and you shall, Nine. knock and it shall be. Do you know that text in Luke chapter 11 is where our Lord is teaching us about the great prayer, the Our Father. And he goes on in that text which most people never learn in Luke chapter 11 where he says this, Yes, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. What father among you, if his son should ask for a fish, would give instead of a fish a serpent? Or if he asked for an egg, would give him a scorpion? If you then, with all your sins, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? You see, this is the great gift. It is a personal gift. It is a person, the Holy Spirit who is infinite love, the bond of infinite love between the Father and the Son, is a person. How often do we ask for the Holy Spirit to fill our souls? How often do we even think of the Holy Spirit, perhaps the most neglected member of the Holy Trinity, and yet so important, so important that Jesus had them pray the first novena for the outpouring of that same spirit depicted here with Mary, the seed of wisdom who had already received the Holy Spirit at the Annunciation, 
guiding the apostles in that prayer for the fire of the Spirit to descend upon them. Now, you all know that you received the Holy Spirit in your baptism. That was the first outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Why then would we need a second outpouring of the Holy Spirit in confirmation? Well, it's just like the gift of the Spirit at Easter and the gift of the Spirit at Pentecost. You heard in the reading from the gospel, the same gospel, by the way, that we use at Easter is repeated on Pentecost Sunday. The gospel from John chapter 20. Because that is the first outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Notice when Jesus appears to the apostles, what happens? They're afraid. Twice he has to say shalom. They think they're seeing a ghost. I mean, if you had just buried a man and he walked into your room, you'd be a little startled, wouldn't you? So twice he has to say, peace be with you. And then he breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. This great gift. And what is the first effect of the Spirit? The forgiveness of sin. Yes, the apostles who had run away now experience the mercy of God. And Jesus then says, whose sins you shall forgive. He's already forgiven our sins. But now they are to bring this gift of mercy into the world. Whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven. Why do you think at Easter we bless everyone with the baptismal water? Because that's the sacrament that relates to Easter. It's the forgiveness of sin. And the Spirit fills the soul when we were baptized and each time it is renewed through reconciliation. And that sprinkling of Easter water, that holy water, that blessed water is a reminder of that forgiveness and of that outpouring of the Spirit. So then why do we need a second one? Well, imagine that I work for Verizon. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I sell you the best phone in town, the best plan in town, and you walk out of this church and you call your mother. You can hear your mother on the line, but your mother cannot hear you. Do we have a problem? You're going to come after me and say, you sold me a dud phone. This thing's a piece of trash. I can't even speak to my mother on this phone. What's the problem? Well, I can hear her, but she can't hear me. Ah. You have a receiver, but no transmitter. Yes, let me give you another phone. You see, in baptism, we become receivers of God's grace. But at Pentecost, and the sacrament related to Pentecost is confirmation, we become transmitters. The same apostles, cowards, runaways, fearful. Now at Pentecost, after praying nine days, that first novena with the Blessed Virgin Mary, receive a second outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and immediately they become powerful, filled with grace and the Spirit. And what happens? Peter began to preach. 2,000 were converted that very day. 2,000 sought baptism because he had received that second power of the Spirit, transmission of grace. And you and I receive that grace in our baptism. But for many of us, it remains dormant. The Holy Spirit is in your soul sleeping because you haven't cooperated with the grace. So how do you do it? Well, what I tell the students is think about a glass of milk, seven ounces of milk, and you've got some nice chocolate, liquid chocolate. You pour that liquid chocolate, chocolate into the <clears throat> glass of milk, and what do you do? It goes to the bottom. How do you turn it into chocolate milk? Stir it up. That's what you need to do. That's what I need to do. We have to cooperate with the grace of the Holy Spirit and stir it up through prayer, through love, through action. Then the Spirit will renew us 
and we will live in the Spirit. That fire of the Spirit, that breath of the Spirit, that wind of the Spirit will renew us as we hear in that first reading about Pentecost. And then we will bear the fruits of the Spirit. You heard that in the letter to the Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. We know what the fruit of this world is, what he calls the fruit of the flesh, immorality, impurity, lust, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, rivalry, jealousy, partisanship, outbursts of fury, selfishness, etc., etc., etc. We see it in the news every day. Who wants to live like that? But, he follows and says, if you want to live in the Spirit, if you want to cooperate with the Spirit in your life, here's what you're going to live like. The fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That's what we want to live like. That's the life we want to have. That's the grace we want to receive. Just yesterday, we had seven of our deacons in the archdiocese ordained to the priesthood. You could see the movement of the Spirit. It was palpable. You could feel the grace of God. How do we live that out, all of us? Number one, get back into the Word of God. Read a little scripture every day. Let that word penetrate your mind, your heart, your soul, your being. Because it's that word out of which we want to live. Number two, invoke the Holy Spirit every day. Some prayer to the Holy Spirit. Begin your day with the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful. Come, Holy Spirit, treasury of every blessing in heaven. Come, Holy Spirit, giver of life, giver of truth. Come into my life. Inflame my soul. So get to know the Word, invoke the Holy Spirit, and then do something about it every day. Because if you're living in the Spirit, you're going to bear fruit in the Spirit, and you're going to make a difference in our world. Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 25 says it clearly, the final test if you're living in the Spirit is you're going to be feeding the hungry. You're going to be visiting the sick. You're going to be making that difference in our world. And so I conclude today with an invocation to the Holy Spirit as we celebrate the great gift that God has given us and that we must ask, seek, and knock the door of heaven for. O Holy Spirit of God, preside over all our thoughts, words, and actions from this hour until the moment of death. Take us to be your disciples. Guide us, illumine us, sanctify us. Bind our hands that we may do no evil. Cover our eyes that we may see it no more. Sanctify our hearts that you, O God, might dwell within. Wherever you lead, we will go. Whatever you forbid, we will renounce. Whatever you command in your strength, we will do. Lead us then, O Spirit of holiness, by your powerful grace, into the abode that is everlasting, both now and forever. Amen.